love making how-to videos on AI image generation, and you seem to love them too. I can't thank you enough for all the likes, subscriptions, and comments. I've been seeing a ton of questions in the comment section lately. In today's video, I'm going to tackle some of the most interesting and common questions that you've been asking. If you have a question, someone else probably is wondering the same thing. Hands down, the most frequent question I get asked is about how I morph images for the videos. Not blending the images in mid-journey, which is pretty straightforward, but how I get images to blend into one another in the videos. This technique is super cool and, believe it or not, super easy. The secret is to find a tool that does the work for you. I use the frame interpolation tool on Runway. Open the tool and drag in the images you want to morph. There may be a maximum number of images you can upload, but I haven't hit that limit yet. Next, use the slider to decide how long you want your video to be. Now hit the Advanced button to reveal the morph time percentage. I usually go for around 50%. That's half static image and half morphing between images. Once you're all set, click Generate. And that's it. Your video will be waiting for you in your video assets. I do a lot of work in mid-journey. I really like the artistic style, but many of you prefer other AI image generators like Leonardo AI and Blue Willow. A common question is if mid-journey prompts work in other AI, particularly the artsy words and phrases that give your image a unique flair. Not all AI are created equal. Mid-journey has its own training data, so knows different terms. Blue Willow doesn't seem to know as many artistic terms as mid-journey, when it does recognize a style, it tends to be more stylized or cartoony. Prompts using common words often work in all AI image generators, but each interprets the words uniquely. It's not that the AI are speaking different languages, it's more like they have different upbringings, with regional differences in vocabulary. Lately, I've started including images, especially from Leonardo and Blue Willow, as examples. To answer the question, sometimes the prompts work in other AI and sometimes they don't. But one thing's for sure, the results will look different between the AI. I frequently get questions about specific prompts and why the AI doesn't seem to deliver expected results. Devon's question demonstrates the power of simplifying your request. Communicate with the AI as if you're talking to a friend or writing a YouTube comment. Simplify. Simply ask for a black background. Terms like these work really well in the AI. We can sometimes overcomplicate things when prompting. We might think adding more details will help, but often less is more. Strive for the clearest way possible to prompt, as if you're chatting with a friend. Just describe the image you have in mind. If you're getting a lot of unwanted text or signatures in your image, try negative prompting. In Stable Diffusion, there's usually an advanced prompt section or an area where you can input negative prompts or things you don't want to see. For unwanted text, you can type the words text, word, letters, or names. In mid-journey, type dash dash no, and then list the elements you don't want to see. Negative prompting isn't foolproof. The AI might just ignore you, and the negative prompting can affect your image's style. If the text is a minor issue, like a few random letters in a corner, it might be easier to use a tool like PhotoP or Be Funky to remove them with the clone tool. Each AI image generator has its own base style, but Midjourney has a look all its own. Mimicking Midjourney's artistic style in other AI isn't a piece of cake. They've got some secret sauce going on. There is a stable diffusion model called Open Journey that can get you close, and with Leonardo, you can make your own models. So if you have Midjourney images, you can use these to build a model. Midjourney's images have a dreamy, ethereal, atmospheric vibe. They often mix natural and surreal elements, with a focus on soft pastel tones and delicate textures. The compositions spark a sense of wonder and tranquility. You may not be able to prompt into Midjourney style, but you can try using prompts like these.
AI images are typically small, often no larger than around 2048 pixels square. This works well for online viewing, but isn't ideal for printing. If you need to resize and upscale images for print, there are plenty of options available. Topaz Gigapixel is a top-notch program. It uses AI to add pixels and make them larger. It not only resizes images, but also sharpens them. But Topaz programs do come at a price. Other options include On One Resize and Luminar Neo. Both are solid choices. If you're looking for free alternatives, you can try GIMP and Pixlr. Both are free programs with resizing capabilities. Most AI have a list of banned words somewhere that limits your ability to create explicit content like porn or overly violent images. Some AI image generators are stricter than others. Some AI, like Midjourney, block the words. Others, like Blue Willow, seem to just ignore them. I haven't seen a specific list of banned words. They tend to change frequently, vary between versions, and only become banned when there's a problem. Having a list might just tempt some creators to find ways around these words. If you're looking to create more graphic content, you can explore models on platforms like MageSpace, which were often developed in response to these restrictions. For most people, banned words won't be a frequent issue. If you do come across one, you can typically find a synonym to get your point across. I really enjoy using ChatGPT to write AI image prompts. It lets me focus on the main idea, and when I nail a prompt recipe, I get an amazing image. I've shown you quite a few in videos, but you can make your own ChatGPT prompts. Here are a few tips. First, let the ChatGPT know that it's an awesome prompt engineer. Then break down the features you want in the image. Think about lighting and decide how much you want the bot to randomize versus how much you want to control yourself. I've shared a bunch of scripts with you and there are even more on the Midjourney Discord. Tango One has put together a terrific list of the scripts generated by users of the Midjourney Image Jam. I'll put a link in the description below. If you're trying to make your own prompt, look to see if there's a script that is close to one you want to create. For instance, if you want to create swords or other assets, maybe choose my jewelry prompt. Feel free to use some of my language in your prompt. For instance, I copy-paste the parameters into each of my ChatGPT prompts. Some questions I get are pretty foundational, like why even bother with AI? What's the point? Well, that's where the philosophy of this channel comes in. AI is fantastic for personal creativity. If you're someone like me who's got an artistic mind but lacks drawing skills to bring these ideas to life, AI is a game changer. Before, only folks who mastered drawing, painting, or complex programs like Photoshop could be visually artistic. I managed to do it through photography, but it takes time to develop technique. Artistic self-expression is different from technique. Most people don't attend art school or spend hours learning to draw or paint. What about us? Don't we have artistic vision? Can't we be self-expressive? With AI, we can create anything we can imagine. We're bypassing the technical learning. Sure, some traditional artists might resist this, thinking it's cheating since they had to put in the time to learn the technique. But AI is here to help us. Some people might want to use AI-generated art to make money, but that's not really what it's all about. It's for you to explore what you want to see and what you love. It's for capturing the essence of you and your view of the world. Create cute cats or dark apocalyptic scenes. It's all up to you. I've seen a lot of comments from viewers who are struggling with difficult prompts. They're frustrated. They can't get the prompt to work in the AI the way they want it to. Viewers are trying to fly a piano, create a faceless cyborg, but the AI just won't cooperate. When I'm having trouble with a particular prompt, I search for different ways to say what I want. Tweak your prompt, try synonyms, remove extra words, or test individual words to see if the AI even understands what you're talking about and try adding an image prompt or two, or three. Show the AI what you want. This is super helpful if you're asking for something that the AI might not have encountered, like flying pianos. You can find or create an image in Photoshop or even sketch one out if you're able to. With Midjourney, we have a new tool, slash describe, but you can also use Clip Interrogator. Find an image close to what you want and feed it into describe or clip interrogator. How does the AI interpret the image? Are there other ways to describe what you're looking for? If nothing else, these tools might give you some ideas of how to alternatively ask for what you want. These tools also help you figure out if the image you're using is any good. Can the AI even interpret it? I'm not certain exactly what Christian had in mind with his flying pianos, but here are a few of my favorites.
Let us know your burning questions about AI image generation in the comments below. If this video was helpful, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. This is Janet making the photo. Let's make something amazing together.